jobs. Literally the only reason that anyone gets up before 11 a.m. <laughs> Politicians care about jobs more than anything else, as you can tell from how often they mention them. These are the things I focus on. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Jobs, jobs, and jobs, period. Jobs? Jobs? <laughs> jobs? It's about jobs, 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 good paying jobs. It's about jobs. Jobs, 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 and more jobs, American jobs. Politicians seem to think that jobs are like Beetlejuice. If you just say the word a magic number of times, eventually they'll just pop up out of nowhere. <laughs> now, more specifically tonight, I'd like to talk about one of the ways that politicians try to create jobs, economic development incentives. And I know that that doesn't sound interesting. Wait, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> You're putting me picture in picture? Is that Entourage the movie? <laughs> Fine, you know what? Switch over the audio, listen to the first line, you'll be back. I may have to jerk it before we even get there. Oh! Oh, how about that? All of a sudden, a show about economic development doesn't seem like the worst thing you could be watching, does it? <laughs> so, <clears throat> as I was saying... <laughs> economic development incentives are essentially when state and local governments offer perks to companies to entice them to build or expand in their area. Here in New York, there is a program called Startup New York, which launched with some pretty astounding tax breaks. Startup New York creates zero tax zones for new businesses for 10 years. Zero property tax, zero corporate tax, zero business tax, and zero income tax. Wow. Zero property, corporate, business, and income tax. And I believe that that sound you just heard was Donald Trump getting an erection. <laughs> wait for it, don't worry, wait for it, wait for it. It's gone again. <laughs> See you next year, little buddy. And, and look, it's, it's not just New York. All 50 states offer some kind of incentives, like tax breaks, to attract companies. And the argument is that they attract employers, uh, which attract jobs, which lead to spending, which creates more jobs, and so on, and so on, and so on. And many places are bought into this hard, trying to outbid one another for businesses. Indiana even once took out attack ads on other states, like this billboard, which read, ill annoyed by higher taxes, come to Indiana, a state that works. And that's pretty aggressive, although it's actually much tamer than their original billboard. Just Arkansas, your tax bill. I'd hope you like our tax breaks, because if you collar our don't, we'll Kineta cut your fucking balls off. <laughs> and, and if a company is big enough, it can even start a bidding war itself. That is actually happening right now with Amazon. They are planning to build a second headquarters somewhere in North America, and they are making governments bid for it. Uh, they even released eight pages of instructions for candidates telling them to think big and be creative, which led many cities to do stupid shit like this. Overnight, the Big Apple looking more like an orange. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio lighting up the city in, quote, Amazon orange. The city of Birmingham is using giant Amazon boxes to try to get Amazon's attention. Stonecrest, Georgia, offering to create a new town of Amazon, Georgia. They would create a new town and name it Amazon. You know, to compete, I'm not surprised that Omaha, Nebraska didn't offer to let Jeff Bezos kill any three people he likes. Because <laughs> you know he would. Look at him. He wants it so bad. It's the only thing he can't have and he wants it. <laughs> and, and numerous mayors made direct appeals to Amazon with videos ending in versions of the same bad joke. Hey, Alexa, where should Amazon locate HQ2? Hmm, in Frisco, Texas. Alexa. Where is the most interesting company in the world going to locate? Obviously, Washington, D.C. So, Alexa, where is the best place for Amazon to locate its second world headquarters? Danbury, Connecticut. I told you so. You know, my one and only worry with all of those ads, and I mean this sincerely, is are they almost too hilarious? <laughs> but those stunts are just window dressing. What Amazon cares much, much more about, as they mentioned in their instructions 21 times, 
are incentives. And while few places are revealing what they offered, we do know that New Jersey reportedly offered $7 billion in tax breaks, which is an insane amount that other places may now have to compete with. And think about what that means. That could mean billions of tax dollars that would not be collected for things like roads or schools or hospitals. And Amazon already has more money than it knows what to do with. How else can you explain the existence of Goliath? I show that, and this is true, literally nobody has ever seen. <laughs> nobody. No human, no animal, nobody. No, but no one. Does it even exist? If you make a show and no one watches it, does it exist? Discuss. And. <laughs> And that is the thing here. We give companies a lot of money through these incentives. By one estimate, in 2015, they cost state and local governments $45 billion. And that money can go to some questionable projects. For instance, a few years ago, Kentucky took a big swing on this. A full-size replica of Noah's Ark is drawing thousands of visitors to Williamstown, Kentucky. This is the Ark Encounter, a chapter from Genesis told on a $100 million budget. Four floors of Noah, his family, and beasts, great and small. The project received $18 million in Kentucky tax incentives. $18 million of tax breaks for a gigantic ark museum. And I'm not saying that that is inherently a bad idea. I do kind of want to see this thing, <laughs> especially as its website genuinely has a section devoted to the question, what about all the manure? <laughs> The answer, apparently, is slatted floors or multiple level cages, which is really not a good answer, because you do not want to be the animal on the lowest level <laughs> of that ship. And while the Ark clearly created some jobs, there were some caveats to those positions. Critics complain of discrimination in hiring. Only Christians, no gays or lesbians, and single people have to sign a chastity pledge. Oh, come on! Aside from the homophobia, chastity is a pretty weird rule to put in place for a museum that's pretty much a gigantic replica of a floating fuck zoo. <laughs> they, they weren't brought in two by two so that everyone would have a swim buddy. They were on that boat to fuck. <laughs> to fuck. But the justification for taking a gamble on a gigantic arc was that it would be a boom to the whole area. And to hear one local official tell it, the economic impact has been underwhelming. The arc's success has not had the ripple effect many hoped it would. Downtown Williamstown, which was expecting increased car and foot traffic, has almost as many empty storefronts as occupied storefronts. What's it meant for downtown Williamstown? Nothing. I don't mean to sound negative in this interview, but... There's nothing here. Yeah, and that kind of makes sense, because once you've spent three hours walking around a wooden boat with sexually frustrated tour guides and haunted by the mental image of a miserable zebra neck deep in shit, because apparently <laughs> decks were assigned alphabetically, you're, you're probably going to skip lunch in town. And look, a well-designed, closely monitored program with clear goals might make sense to an area, but too often the terms are extremely lax. Some don't require that jobs be created at all, and some require almost laughably few. Remember Startup New York? Zero taxes for a decade? <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't think about it. I'm sure it will pass. That program is hiring requirements. That program's hiring requirements were that you create just one new job a year. And the state recently considered scaling that back to one new job in the first five years. And sometimes these incentives are given out even when they may not be necessary. Take a look at Fargo, North Dakota. <coughs> you know what? He's not wrong. He's not wrong, and I knew that would do the job. <laughs> Fargo gave a tax break to FedEx for moving a facility to their city. But why? Did they really need to? Because just listen to what happened when one city council member asked that very question of a FedEx representative. Mr. Wilson, if you don't get this exemption, will you still move to Fargo? Yes, sir, we will. OK. Yet, ten minutes later, the council voted to give FedEx that exemption. Why? Also, if someone wants to willingly move to Fargo, you don't offer them tax incentives. You simply offer them a full psychological workup that starts with the question, who did you murder? <laughs> we'll, we'll still let you live here, but we do need to know. 
and, and then, then there are programs narrowly set up to encourage a particular industry to grow, which can sound great, but may not lead to good permanent jobs. Take film and TV incentives. At some point in the last couple of decades, nearly every state decided that they wanted to be the next Hollywood. And now, 31 states have incentive programs for film or TV. The problem with that is, if you are one of them, you have 30 other states competing with you hard. And because film productions are portable, if you try and scale back your incentives, they'll just go wherever a better deal is. Just listen to this movie producer who has taken advantage of multiple states' incentives. I would never make a movie where I didn't get an incentive and I don't ever intend to. But at the end of the day, if there's an incentive, it's good for me. And look, <laughs> he's not wrong. I mean, yes, he looks like every woman's worst ex-boyfriend, but he's, he's not wrong. It is not his job to worry about whether his incentives are good for states. It is his job to, I'm assuming, refer to sushi as sush, because he <laughs> definitely does that. But... <laughs> But it, but it should be someone, someone's job to worry about the effects of these programmes. And on some occasions when states have done that, the news they got was not great. For instance, Louisiana found that for every dollar it spent on its film programme, it generated just 22 cents of tax revenue, which sounds bad, but which is still better than Maryland, which made just 10 cents for every dollar spent, which is still better than Connecticut's programme, which returned only 7 cents on the dollar. That's like putting a dollar into a vending machine and getting a single yellow starburst in return. <laughs> At some point, what you're getting out is not worth what you're putting in. And defenders of economic incentives will say that's just a fraction of the broader economic benefit that they bring. The problem is, there's not much evidence for that. And I know that accounting for the total economic impact of anything is tricky, but we are gambling billions of dollars on little more than faith, and even basic information can be really hard to come by. One study found that three quarters of major state development programs don't even disclose actual jobs created or workers trained. So we're basically throwing money down a hole and hoping it brings us prosperity, which is the exact business model of a fucking wishing well. <laughs> And to see this at perhaps its most pointless, just look at Kansas and Missouri. They've offered competing tax breaks to businesses for years, which has made things particularly interesting in one metro area. So I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. That's it behind me. Uh, there is Kansas City, Kansas. Two states, one metro area, but both states offer subsidies for job creation. Create a job, you get a tax break. So what do businesses do? A uh, Missouri business will move some employees over to Kansas City, Kansas, and uh, claim a tax break, move them back, claim another tax break. It's true. For instance, Kansas City, Missouri lost corporate offices for all these companies to Kansas City, Kansas, which in turn lost offices for all these companies to Kansas City, Missouri. And that isn't creating jobs any more than moving your couch from the bedroom to the living room is creating fucking furniture. <laughs> And this war has come at a real cost. A local foundation has studied two state-level incentives programs and estimates that since 2009, around 6,600 jobs have moved from Missouri to Kansas, while around 5,500 jobs have moved from Kansas to Missouri, meaning there's been a net gain of around 1,100 jobs on the Kansas side of the line at a combined cost to the two states of $331 million in lost tax revenue. And think about that for a second. You could create a program where the first 1,100 people to move from to Kansas City from Missouri would each get a Ferrari, which they could then drive around a giant pile of $30 million that the state had set on fire, and you'd actually be fiscally responsible because you would have saved the area $20 million. <laughs> Look, it is pretty clear that economic development needs to be done in a much smarter way. And I don't fully blame the companies for this, because if governments are going to offer ridiculous incentives, they are going to take them. So governments need to hold themselves and companies more accountable. And if companies aren't producing what they promised, we need a system to claw our money back. But to find that out, we're going to need much more oversight over these programmes and what we're getting in return. Although I will tell you one thing that I know for sure we got in return, the Entourage movie. <laughs> That got a $5.8 million tax credit from California, and where else were they going to film Entourage? <laughs> Idaho? So, California, please know that you indirectly had a hand in producing a movie which, may I remind you, had this for its very first line. 
I may have to jerk it before we even get there. You know what? I've got to say this. Congratulations, Kentucky Ark Museum, because somehow you've become the second worst taxpayer-subsidized fuckboat in this story. 